What's up everybody and welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to be going over how to use the rotate and perspective tool in Darktable. So here I have this image. So now let's go up and underneath our search bar, I'm gonna just type in perspective and we get the rotate and perspective module. So if I click on that and make sure that it's turned on with the little on button, you can see that we have a rule of thirds pop up that shows us that the tool has been activated. I'm gonna real quickly run through all of these different options and what they do. This is super important to how you use the tool. If you're looking to understand how to use the tool, this is the section to watch. First and foremost, we have rotation up here. Of course, we can rotate however we want. And if we rotate and then we click out of the tool, let's say that uh, I click into my orientation now, you can see that that rotation is applied to the image. So I'll go back here and I'll double click on the rotation to reset that back to zero. Underneath the cropping format, you can see that we have off. So this way, if I rotate, you can see that there's no sort of cropping, that the image is just expanded to whatever the furthest out pixel of each edge of the picture is. So this actually adds pixels to my image. I can change this to largest area which you can see this box is now narrower than the overall aspect ratio of my image. And so Darktable will look at this image and it will look at the area between the crop and try and preserve as much of the image as possible by discarding the aspect ratio. And then underneath original format, that will keep the aspect ratio, but you will lose some image information for sure. So you can choose which one you wanna use when you're using the rotation here. And this does apply to these tools down here. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna keep this on original format just for the purposes of this tutorial. And again, I'll double click on this to reset it. And then I'll just rotate it ever so slightly just to get a better rotation on this image. Okay, so now we come down here to the perspective. And underneath perspective, we have structure, which has three tools. We have fit, which has three tools, and then we have manual perspective. Now the manual perspective is actually what gets changed. This structure and this fit, they work in conjunction with each other to feed information into the manual perspective. So whatever you do up here actually changes these sliders, and you'll see that in a minute. First up, we have the manually draw structure lines tool. Then we have the manually defined perspective rectangle tool, and then we have an automatic analysis tool. So you choose one of these tools to define straight lines in your image, and then you choose the fit tool that you want. So for instance, since I already managed to fix the rotation up here, I might just wanna use this first fit tool, which is the Y axis or the up down fit tool and that will correct for the vertical distortion of the image. This second fit tool will correct for the horizontal distortion if you only have horizontal distortion. And then this third will correct for both vertical and horizontal. So the way that this tool works is you choose one of these structures up top and define the straight lines. And then at the bottom, you choose which of these tools you need. Generally, you only want to use the vertical or horizontal if you need that. If you need both, then that's great, that's fine. Uh, but the less distortion that you have in your image, the more correct things will look. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the structure tool right here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a line. And you can see that when I draw a line, I have a blue line if it's horizontal. I can draw another line and that one turns green when it's vertical. And I can just draw as many of these lines as I want. And generally what I wanna do is I wanna go along with straight lines that I see in my image. And the more of these lines that I draw, the better off my perspective distortion compensation will be. So I'm just gonna draw all these lines, maybe add a few more vertical lines here, something like that. You can grab these circles at the end of each line and as I rotate it, if I rotate it around past the 45 degree mark, all of a sudden the line turns blue and it becomes a horizontal line. If I rotate it back, all of a sudden the line becomes green. It's considered a vertical line. I can click in the center of the line to move it 
anywhere in my image. And if I right click, right mouse button click, in the center of the line itself, it deletes it. So I can go through and I can just delete all these lines. Or even better, I can just hit this icon right here to reset the entire tool. Okay, and now I'm going to hit the correct for vertical perspective tool. And you can see that now we have this vertical correction. I'm going to click away just so we can see what the image looks like without the outside edges that are the pixels that are being deleted and cropped. And you can see that the top of this tower has been brought forward in perspective a little bit. Not actually, it's, it's just mimicking, of course, that forward perspective. Uh, all of these lines, I, I kind of went a little bit too much, I think, and we can see that now it looks like the tower is kind of coming in at the bottom instead of getting wider. That gives you an idea of how to use that tool. If I go ahead and click the structure tool again, I click the horizontal correction tool. Now I'll click away and we can see that the image has been corrected horizontally as well as a little bit vertically. Of course, I can go back to this tool again and I can correct for both horizontal and vertical. And I'll click away so we can see. And this is what that looks like. Now, as I mentioned before, if we look down here in the manual perspective, the lens shift horizontal, lens shift vertical, and shear all have been changed. So I can go in and I can do some uh, minute manual corrections if I need to on these parameters to kind of correct the image if some of the lines that I drew with the, the manual draw structure tool are a little bit off. So I'm gonna reset these here by double clicking on them. Now let's go to the perspective rectangle. And if I click that, you can see that the perspective rectangle tool gives me two horizontal and two vertical lines with connected circles. So it's not like I can just draw lines wherever I want. And to use this tool, you just go ahead and find a rectangle in your image that you think works well to define the perspective. And I'm gonna zoom in here so I can get a better look. Okay, now I'll zoom back out. And this time I'll just, I'll hit the horizontal and vertical correction. And we can see the horizontal and vertical correction that we get. Let me take a look at that. I actually don't mind that, that correction. Um, and you'll also notice that when I did that, the rotation was automatically updated as well. So using the structure tools also defines the rotation of the image. Okay, I'm gonna reset everything again. And this time I'm gonna turn on this tool, which is uh, the automatic analysis. So I'm gonna click that and you see, wow, we have so many lines that have popped up. So uh, red lines are vertical lines that are being discarded. Orange or yellow lines are, vert are horizontal lines that are being discarded. And then we have the normal blue horizontal and green vertical lines. Now, if I click right here, I left mouse button click, you can see that I have a brush that pops up. I can left mouse button click to add and right mouse button click to subtract. And the way that you use this is let's, let's go in here and let's say that I don't like these lines here that have been automatically detected. So I want to not include them as vertical lines. I would left mouse button click and go ahead and draw over those lines in order to turn them red. So they're not gonna be included in the image analysis. Um, but if I wanted to add them back in, I would left mouse button click and drag, and I could then add them back in. Same thing, if I left mouse button click and then scroll my mouse wheel up, then it decreases the size of my brush and scroll my mouse wheel down and it increases the size of my brush. I can grab more or fewer lines that way. So what you would wanna do is you would wanna come in here and go ahead and get rid of all the lines that don't quite fit. If you feel like there aren't enough lines, you can control click to add additional edge enhancement. And if you feel like there's some lines in the details that are not being brought out, you can hold down shift and shift click this tool. And now Darktable will look at the details instead of the edges to find straight or horizontal lines. And then if you want to do both of those methods, you can just hit control shift and left mouse button click. And now you can see that we have both edges and detail lines like these people down here 
have lots of lines on them because they are detail versus all of these edges up here have been brought out. So now with the edges auto detected, I'm gonna click the automatic horizontal vertical and see what happens. You can see that with all that information, there's been this incredible, very unpleasing distortion that's been applied to the image. So I'm gonna go back and just reset all this because in this particular image, I think the, the best result that we got was from the rectangle here. So I'm gonna apply the rectangle one more time real quick. Okay, so now that I've applied that, the last thing we're gonna go over is the guidelines. So I can click this show guides and it will turn the guidelines on and off for the rule of thirds. Of course, I can click this little button on the right-hand side here, and we can change the type of guidelines to the metering guides, or maybe the golden spiral to see how our image works with that particular layout. Of course, if you change the, the grid layout to something like a grid here, then you have these extra controls to define the horizontal and vertical subdivisions and amounts of squares within the grid if you're looking for something specific. Then we have the overlay color, which is gray. You can change it to green, cyan, red, magenta, and then the contrast or uh, it's similar to opacity or maybe saturation as well. So you can change that and then you can turn it on and off. And of course I click away. And there you go. That is how to use the rotate and perspective tool in Darktable. This is honestly one of my favorite tools because it's so powerful, especially when shooting architecture and other images that have straight lines that need to have straight lines in the image. If this tutorial has been helpful for you, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content that helps other people who might have the same issue that you had see this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.